Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is a 2006 Cadillac Escalade that came in straight off the farm and this thing is in desperate need of a good detail. All right, so you probably saw the title, but this Escalade has earned the disaster detail status for a number of reasons. The first being the ridiculous amount of dust inside the door jams, it's literally an inch thick in some places, and the entire exterior of this vehicle is just as bad given that it's used as the kid hauler on the farm, plus the front end is completely covered in bug guts. Moving to the interior, and this is where the fun starts, as the carpets are stained in so many different places. There's all kinds of debris and straw in here, and then nearly every seat and interior panel has dirt or mud on it. This Escalade has clearly been used and abused for years on the farm. And now just before we jump into the video guys, make sure you take a quick second and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. All right guys, well you can see I've got a ton of work ahead of me to get this Escalade looking pretty again. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so as I get started with the pressure washer here, you'll notice I've got a bunny hug, toque, and winter gloves on, and that's because it's only a couple degrees out this morning, but this Escalade still needs to get washed. So I'm starting with a pre-wash rinse to remove as much of the dirt and the dust that's accumulated from all the gravel roads that this vehicle sees. So as I try to get some of the bugs off the front end here, I figured I'd mention that if you guys aren't already following me over on Instagram, then you are missing out on sneak peeks of new vids and behind the scenes stuff. So make sure you give me a follow over there if you want to stay up to date on things. Moving to the back here, and this is where it becomes super apparent that this Escalade has spent a ton of time on gravel roads because the amount of dust in all the cracks and crevices here was absolutely insane. Literally, the more I sprayed, the more dust came out. It was like a never ending fountain of mud. So because the door jams had so much caked on dust in them, using the pressure washer was really the only viable way to get them clean. But obviously I'm being very careful to control the spray so I don't get any water going into the vehicle. Now you guys saw in the opening shots that the back hatch had piles and piles of caked on dust. So seeing no other good way of getting this clean, I grabbed some old towels, laid them out to protect the interior, basically just went to town with the pressure washer. And as you can see, this actually worked really, really well. It only took a couple of minutes to get it clean and I managed to keep all the mud and the water from going inside the vehicle. I ended up just tossing the towels when I was done because they were soaked in mud, but that was a pretty small price to pay.
All right, so now that's warmed up a few degrees, the toque and the gloves are off. And once I've got the vehicle all foamed up, I'll go around with a detail brush and get into all the places that my wash mitt is going to miss, like behind the gas door and around any emblems or trim. Now for the plastic wheel well liners, I like to use the leftover soapy water from my wash bucket and a soft brush. Make sure that I get them nice and clean and that I didn't miss anything with the pressure washer. Alright, so with the vehicle drip drying in the garage for a bit, I can turn to the floor mats and start by spraying them off to get all the dirt and the gunk off of them. And then I'll follow up with some all-purpose cleaner diluted 4 to 1, agitate with a soft brush, and then rinse them clean. And later, once they're dry, depending on the shape that they're in, I'll sometimes use some CarPro Pearl diluted 2 to 1 to revive the look of them and give them a nice matte black look. Well, I managed to drag everyone's favorite couch potato out here to help me dry this enormous vehicle. And even though Mike has a bit of a hard time focusing on the job at hand, it still doesn't take us very long to dry the vehicle with these big plush microfiber drying towels. All right, so getting started on the interior, and the first thing I do is remove any of the loose items or the garbage in here from the glove box and the center console under the seats, or I guess in this case, the owner's collection of air fresheners, uh, which I actually thought was pretty funny. Um, I don't know what on earth person could need that many for though. So with a vehicle like this where the back row seats come out super easy, it's a no-brainer to remove them. So I've got more room to maneuver around, but I can also get at all the dirt that was hiding underneath, especially down in the anchor points. So as I'm starting to vacuum here, one thing I've noticed is how plush this carpet is, uh, which makes sense because it is a luxury vehicle. So it is actually making vacuuming a lot easier as the dirt and the debris really isn't trapped down in the fibers like it is in a lot of the vehicles that I see that have cheaper carpets.
Now, despite there being a rubber floor mat in the rear footwell, you can still see there's quite a bit of embedded dirt in the carpets and then some sort of pink stain that I'll have to deal with, but I am expecting the drill brush and the Bissell to make quick work of that later. So since this vehicle sees a ton of gravel roads, there's a fair bit of dust that's accumulated in all the cracks and the crevices, so the detail brush comes in super handy as I can get that lifted out and into the vacuum. Now as I get started on the carpets here, like I had mentioned before about them being nice and plush and higher quality, it also makes a big difference when it comes to extracting because more of the solution is actually coming out on the first pass, uh, so it's reducing the amount of time it actually takes to do one section. Although my process is still the same, and then I'll do my first few passes while spraying on hot water, I'll be watching to see the color of the water coming up, and if it's dirty or there's still solution coming through, I'll either make more passes or I'll add more solution, use the drill brush again. Um, basically, once I see the water coming out clear, I'll switch over to just extracting to get them as dry as I can. And in terms of how long it takes for the carpets to dry, it's usually only a couple of hours as I'll have the heater and the grad running and all the doors open. So the whole detail so far, I've been on the fence about taking the second row seats out because I really wasn't sure if I was going to have the time, but it turned out the customer didn't need the vehicle back until the following day, so I decided to remove them to make it easier to clean the seats, but also to do the carpets underneath them. And I'm looking at the driver's side and I'm really glad they're out because it would have been almost impossible to get at that stain if they weren't. So with that stain being pretty big, I'm making sure to go over it really well with the drill brush. And then as I start to extract over that area, there's some pretty funky colors coming up, um, which is always fun to see. And if you guys don't know, the extractor I'm using here is a Bissell Spot Clean Professional that I bought off Amazon. And I know I probably mention this in every video, but that's because I love this thing so much. The quality that you get for the price is outstanding, and it really makes cleaning carpets incredibly fun and easy. And it's one of those things that I wish I had known about sooner because I use it so much. I've got the link to this and almost every other product and tool that I use in the description below. So feel free to check those out. I'd highly recommend giving this unit a look. So 
So I wasn't quite happy with how that stain was looking after the first few passes. So I'm adding some more solution and I'm hoping that a second round will get it looking a lot more presentable. Turning to the section of the carpet in between the two second row seats, and this was definitely the worst area here as you can imagine, since there was no rubber floor mat and the kids' dirty shoes or winter boots would be walking all over this carpet. So even after I've made the first pass, you can still see some light staining in the carpet despite the extractor pulling up some pretty dirty water. So knowing that this is a heavy traffic spot, I will go ahead and add more solution and redo the process to get it as clean as possible. All right guys, it is the moment you've all been waiting for. Have a look at all that nasty water pulled from these carpets and the nice layer of sludge at the bottom of the bucket. It's so gross. All right, so busting out my McCulloch steamer and there was a ton of sticky grime in these seat anchor points, which would otherwise be really difficult to clean but the steamer makes super quick work of it as it can get everything loosened up and just ready to be wiped clean with a microfiber towel. Not to mention this is just another one of those tools that's super fun to use. So if you guys are interested, the link to it is in the description and I would definitely recommend checking it out as it's fairly inexpensive for being such a versatile tool. All right, so turning to the interior trim, and I'm using some all-purpose cleaner and diluted 10 to 1, wiping everything down with a slightly damp microfiber towel, and also using a detail brush to get into any of the tighter spaces. All 
pulling out the steamer again and using the brush attachment and some four to one APC makes really quick work of these dirty pedals. Turning to the leather, which was actually pretty dirty, and after spraying on some Meguiar's leather cleaner, I'm agitating with a soft horsehair brush and then wiping them down with a dry microfiber towel. Then once I've got each seat clean, I'll use some leather conditioner to help nourish the leather and keep these seats feeling nice and soft. Now with all the interior trim nice and clean, it's time to apply my favorite product, and quite possibly the best UV protectant on the market, and that's 303's Aerospace Protectant. And so after spraying some into a microfiber applicator pad, I'm applying it to all the interior plastics, and you can really see just how much it revives the look, gives it that freshly detailed look that will last for weeks. I highly recommend you guys pick some of this stuff up. You will not be disappointed. Second last step on the interior is to deal with these nasty water stains in the headliner. So I'm spraying on some of my carpet solution and then gently agitating with a detail brush and blotting dry with a microfiber towel. Sometimes I'll use some all-purpose cleaner for headliners, but given the magnitude of this stain, I felt the carpet and the upholstery solution was the better way to go. Now just before I put the seats back in, I'll do a quick final vacuum to get any of the debris that has appeared after being in and out of the vehicle so many times. back to the exterior of this Escalade, and after spraying on some quick detailer for lubricant, I'm using clay bar to pick up and remove any surface bonded contaminants on the paint. Things like tar, tree sap, road grime, basically anything that's stuck on the paint. Uh, and I honestly wasn't surprised at all to see just how much crud was removed, So I'm guessing this vehicle has never been clayed before. What this basically does is it gets the paint perfectly clean and will allow for better bonding of a wax or sealant, as well as improved gloss and clarity, so it's gonna look even better. So to protect this Escalade's paint, I'm using some Meguiar synthetic sealant, which is gonna add a ton of gloss and depth back to really make this black paint shine.
Last step on the exterior, and that's to apply 303 protectant to all the black plastic trim to give it a deep matte black look and really make it pop. All right, and 12 hours later, I'm done with this Escalade. This thing is looking baller again. Uh, it does kind of hurt though, knowing it's going straight back out to the farm and it's gonna be dirty again soon. Um, but it did really need to be detailed badly. It was, it was a mess. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.